thank you so much everybody for joining um thank you for your patience while we are sorting out that small matter um today's agenda the iboot camp fundraising tips as you know that we are having the iboot camp in south africa in october and it's going to be important that we raise funds so that we are able to send as many of our members as possible to the event because it's going to add a lot of value so today we are saying raising funds is really a learnable skill um, we're going to be helping you to learn how to approach your friends, your family, your high net worth individuals, organizations, and enterprises in your community to help them get you um, to help get them on your side so that they can give you the support that you need to be able to attend that boot camp and upskill yourself. All right. Um, before I introduce myself and before my co-host introduces himself, I'm just gonna go through the webinar etiquette. I'm going to apologize. It might be a little bit noisy where I am, but hopefully you guys can hear me well. Webinar etiquette, when you enter the round table, please make sure you're on mute the whole time. Please remain on mute throughout the whole webinar and also ensure that your camera is off. If at any point you have any questions or comments or anything of that, of that nature, please write them in the chat box and also include your name and the country that you are listening in from. Um, those whose questions or comments are selected will be asked to unmute and speak at the end of the um, webinar when we are doing the Q&A. If you are selected to speak, please unmute yourself, introduce yourself um, by your name and your country, then repeat the question as you had typed it in the chat box. All right, so I hope that's clear. That's the webinar quit. Mute the whole time, camera off, questions and comments in the chat. We will choose you to unmute if your question is selected at the end. When you are selected, please, your name, your country, read your question as it was. All right, great. So myself, um, one of the moderators for today's training, my name is Priti Toho. I am the former director of operations at Yada Botswana, I'm currently joining in in Zambia today. So if you hear background noises where people are not talking like this, just know that I'm not in Botswana today. I'm with my fellow Zambians. So if you're on this chat and you're from Zambia, um, please let me know in the chat so we can talk. All right, cool. John, I'm going to hand over to you to, to, say to, um, to sorry, um, introduce. All right. All right. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can pretty, hear you. Pretty. Okay. So my name is John Obwaba, and I am the West Africa Regional Associate for Yalda. Um, so that is about me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, John. So John and I are going to be moderating today's um, moderating and training on today's webinar. What is the agenda? We're going to talk about fundraising. As we said, fundraising is basically ways in which you can approach the different people in your community to assist you to be able to raise funds so that you are able to attend the iBoot camp. We are gonna be talking crowdfunding today. We're gonna to be talking sponsorship fundraising. We're gonna be talking how to organize fundraising events. We're gonna talk about other ways to receive sponsorship. And then we're gonna talk about Miles for Youth Empowerment in Africa. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about how you can connect with the various um, Yalta branches. All right, so straight into the fundraising tips. Basically what we're saying is that as you, you, you gear up for the iBoot camp, we know that there are a lot of challenges that uh, many of you might be thinking about right now. Where am I gonna get the money to go to South Africa? You know, how am I gonna do all of that? I have five other people uh, within my branch who also want to go. How are we going to make that happen? So today we are gonna be giving you these three main tips that are gonna help you to secure, whether it's money, whether it's 
uh, miles for flights, all of that sort of thing to be able to help you. There's going to be a lot of um, costs that you would need to incur in making this trip. And we are saying that it's worthwhile to actually make the trip because you are going to get upskilled. So we are giving you tips today to help you so that you are able to actually attend the iBoot camp. The three fundraising options that we have are crowdfunding, sponsorship fundraising, and organizing fundraising events. And again, we're going to talk about um, the, the, the miles option later. I'm going to talk about crowdfunding quickly and then hand over to John. So basically, what we're saying is that crowdfunding online is a great option for you if you want to raise funds, right? It's a very easy and simple way for you to be able to mobilize the people that you are, that are in your network that you know, whether it be friends, family, whether they're at home, whether they're overseas, anybody that you know um, who can source or who can fund you. Basically, crowdfunding, the name says it all. You basically um, receive money from different groups of people, they chip in whatever they chip in, whether it's $1, whether it's $10, whether it's $100, all of that adds up and ends up making a lot of money for you to be able to potentially, or potentially make a lot of money for you to be able to cover some of your costs. So what does crowdfunding involve? It involves curating and sharing links with the networks, both within and outside the country. So there are many different websites that you can use for crowdfunding. I think the one that most of you are familiar with is GoFundMe. So basically what you do, you go on these websites, you create your links, and again, you share them with your networks. So something that I forgot to, to, to talk about before we started was in raising your funds, you're going to need to get people on your side to be able to actually raise these, these funds or to be able to want to help you. So you need to be very clear yeah. on, on why it's important uh, for people to assist you. So you need to understand your business case, as it were. So again, it's the iBoot camp. You should understand why exactly it's important for you to understand for you to attend the IA boot camp and you should be in a position to explain it well to people who ask you so that they can also see the value in helping you to attend the IA boot camp. All right, so it's important for you to really behind the scenes ensure that you understand it well. And then if you're gonna do crowdfunding, again, these are the different funds that um, the different uh, crowdfunding websites that are available to you. Um, create a very short and sweet message and be sure to let people know that whatever contribution they make is valuable. So nobody should feel like I only have $10, that is nothing. You must let them know that whatever money they can help you with is gonna go a long way towards helping you. So that is that, that on crowdfunding. I'm not sure whether there are, but anyway, it's fine. If you do have questions again, type them in the chat. We can talk about them later. I believe these slides will be available to you, including the recording. So in terms of these websites and things, you, you'll have access to that. All right, the next item on the agenda is the sponsorship funding. So I'm gonna hand over to John to talk about that. Okay, pretty. thank you very much for, for, for your presentation. So I am picking up from um, Pretty, and I will be speaking first about um, sponsorship fundraising. So, like Pretty mentioned, the the, the tax of getting funds to attend the iBoot camp, it's it's really it's really a it's it's a very a very very heavy tax on on us all, and even as you apply to be a delegate. One of the options, apart from crowdfunding, that is available for us to explore as sponsorship fundraising. So it's 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 we may all be aware about sponsorship fundraising. Basically, you need to identify companies, enterprises, universities. So in every country, you may have peculiar situations about institutions that 
offer funds to support courses like this. It may happen that in your country, university, you don't see most universities supporting this kind of uh, uh, events or participation in this kind of event, but more of companies. So you first need to um, map out the category of institutions, whether academic institutions, or corporate institutions that supports courses like this. Then you, 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 you have to know what their interests are. So every company that you want to reach out to, to sponsor you to attend this particular iBoot camp, the first thing you need to do as a delegate or as a fundraiser is to identify the interest areas of the institution. So if it is um, a financial institution, for instance, you may want to know what are the corporate social responsibility uh, interest areas of this particular financial institution so that you are able to package your sponsorship application uh, appropriately. So you have to know what is the company interested about aside their, their main uh, profit motive. Then you will need to focus your, your, your application or your messaging around this particular issue. So for instance, if you approach a telco, a telecommunication company, and you want them to sponsor you to attend the CS I bootcamp, you may want to know what are the social uh, 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 interest areas of, of, of this telco. For instance, if you go for MTN, so we have the MTN Foundation. So you may want to know for this year, 2023, what are the strategic directions of MTN Foundation so that you'll be able to package your sponsorship request appropriately. If you find out that MTN Foundation does not or is not interested in events like those, youth entrepreneurship programs of this nature, you may not need to waste your time around it. So there is this initial research that you need to do first on those institutions. And in fact, for all you know, Vodafone has a, a, a strategic direction this year to support youth entrepreneurship or youth leadership uh, uh, um, agenda. So then it falls well within your scope. So the issue is that you need to do this initial investigations or initial uh, research, desk research. Then you'll be able to package your request um, appropriately. Then you need to show the institution that you are not just interested in attending the event. So for instance, if you approach a foundation, uh, um, a foundation that supports young people to attend events like this or conferences or I boot camps like this, and the outcome is to help them build businesses or build leadership capacities. You may want to focus your request, suit your request within this context and say that, Okay, so my attendance to this I boot camp this year is to help me refine my business idea. Because when I attend the I boot camp, I will have the opportunity to meet up with industry experts, other entrepreneurs, technical experts to give me feedback on my idea, or even attract some form of investment to, 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 to support the implementation of my idea. So it is important for you to do this to do this analysis so you don't just jump into putting up a request to an institution uh, for sponsorship no 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 you will need to find out about the institution and what they are interested in an institution may be interested in youth events like this maybe for last year previous years but not for this year so you may want to know for this year, what is their direction and then suit your, your sponsorship request. It is very, 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 very important because then people will listen to you because you are speaking 
towards their direction. And that is one thing that we want to share with our delegates as we prepare for our fundraising activities. Next slide, please. All right, cool. So I'm gonna stop um, sharing my screen now. Okay. Yeah. All right, Hasiba, feel free to go over. Yes, I'm going to screen. Um, I'm going to share the screen. Sure thing. We are on slide. Let me confirm. We're on Thank slide you. eleven now. Please, can you allow me to share my screen as am I disabled? As only, I mean, I am seeing the message that the host disabled participant screen sharing. If someone okay. can, just, yeah, please, thank you. Yeah, um, Lana, can you give, uh, you make um, a post so she can share? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Can you? So before I I I I jump into how to package your sponsorship request, I, I want to make an additional point in, on the previous slide, please. Okay. So about showing the company that you are not just interested in the event, but also the skills you acquire, how it will support their vision. You would need to situate yourself as a person on your vision within the organization's context. So you tell the organization that the skills I'm going to re receive from this I would come, the, the, the opportunity of uh, uh, fine tuning my business idea or the leadership uh, skills I'm going to acquire from this particular bootcamp, when I come back, you should be able to tell the organization that upon returning from this conference or from this iBoot camp, A, B, C, D, I will be able to do to support the organization's mission, your organization's mission. And this is an action plan that you would need to develop yourself whilst you approach the organization. So the organization sees a value in supporting you either cash or kind to attend this particular boot camp. So uh, I, would, I would encourage delegates to focus also on this particular point as it, it, it has the potential of, 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 of giving you leverage of attracting uh, sponsorship. Thank you. How do we package our sponsorship request? Now, the the, 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 the sponsorship request may come in the form of a sponsorship letter or a sponsorship uh, application. You will first need to introduce yourself. And introducing yourself, you are introducing yourself within your professional, I mean, uh, space. And while you are introducing yourself, you must bear in mind that you, you are marketing yourself for a sponsorship. So you don't uh, accent for um, support to attend a boot camp to refresh your ideas. Whilst you are introducing yourself as a musician interested in uh, uh, something else, uh, uh, which is not linked to, to, to the I boot camp. So amongst the varied vision or interest you may have, you may want to focus more on the relevant aspects of yourself that fits within the organization's mission. Now, why is a program important? You must be able to tell your sponsor, potential sponsor or the institution that this event is important because when, like I, I said in my previous slide, it's first of all aligns with your organization's vision. And sponsoring me to attend this particular boot camp would help me acquire school ABC. 
will help me uh, build capacity this, or will help me refine my business or develop a business idea upon return. This is how I will be able to make an impact in your organization, one way or the other. It does not require you to be to join the company as an employee. No, there are various ways that you can help promote and an organization's vision or mission. Fair idea. So the boot camp, what are the various sessions? How are these sessions empowering? How are these sessions going to contribute to you? Uh, uh, acquiring that uh, skill that, wow, has the potential of building capacity of the sponsor. And overall, it is linked to our core mandate of vision. Um, we we asked the link so that you attach this to your sponsorship applications. And who are the speakers? Who is attending the event? Who are the key people? For instance, this is for instance, if we, we've been able to secure uh, uh, former President Barack Obama to this year. SI bootcamp. You may want to flag that the organization. Wow. So being a sponsor of a candidate where Obama is coming to speak gives some form of leverage. So it's about identifying who are the speakers, how is this event extraordinary for you to attract sponsorship to the event? Then what are the actual, what are you asking for? You don't begin your sponsorship application by accent. No, you, you, you end by accent. You end by telling people what you will need. But you don't begin by telling people why well, I'm applying for sponsorship uh, um, to, for my flight or for um, my round trip flight or my delegate registration to attend I boot camp and that is no. You first begin about the things we shared earlier. What is the vision? How is it going to impact you? How is it going to impact your sponsor? Then, whilst you have laid the foundation, then you tell the sponsor, based on this, I would require this support to attend the I, I boot camp. So you must also you must also be able to. Uh, uh, determine the your your needs. So, for instance, before you begin this whole fundraising process, you must sit as a delegate and then decide what do I need to attend the iBoot camp. One, I need a round trip flight. Two, I need to register and the registration I need to pay, and this is the amount. Three. I need uh, support in terms of maybe other logistics, personal logistics. Four, I need support in terms of maybe local transport. So when I get to South Africa, I will need to, uh, my local transport and things, I will need to visit one or two sites and all that. I will need to pay. So you would have to do a budget. And based on the budget, you make your request. And don't be quick in demanding financial support in terms of monetary support, in terms of cash. You may also want to re uh, request uh, support in kind. So for instance, if the company is willing to pay for your flight in indirectly, not through you, you must be able to accept that. If the company is able to, uh, but maybe the company has a support, uh, a subsidiary in South Africa, and they are supposed to, they can support you in providing some form of logistic when you get there, fine. But the, the issue is that don't just be focused on cash and as that may deter or uh, other sponsors from uh, getting in touch or agreeing to sponsor you. You also need to attach recommendation letters. 
or confirmation letter. So there are two most important letters that once you register for the Air Camp, we will be issuing it to you. One is confirmation of participation. So upon registering for the Air Camp, we will give you a letter confirming that you have been accepted to participate in the Air Camp. And this letter comes from Yalda. So this letter is a support letter to your fundraising uh, activities. The second letter we'll be giving to you, which will be liaison with the embassies, is the visa letter. So the visa letter is also to support you to raise support, uh, fundraise, uh, to fundraise for the to attend the event. So it means that you 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 have all some these letters to support you, and and as delegates, we will be giving out these letters to you. So once you add these letters to your application, I think it will. Um, fast track some of your fundraising processes um, for you. Thank you. The next slide, please. So sometimes when you identify the sponsors, you will need to book for a meeting. Sometimes you, you write the response application, but remember to always book. When the opportunity comes for you to book a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one engagement, try and do that and explore the opportunity because it gives you the opportunity to, to speak. And sometimes that is empowering, more, I mean, convincing. Introduce yourself when you book a meeting. Uh, request uh, to participate in the upcoming event or program. So, you know, you, you have research about the, this particular organization. So, you know, some of their interesting events. So, you request to participate in some of their interesting events. This is also a form of creating your networks and then, uh, I mean, making, announcing yourself and letting the organization know that you are interested in their vision. You can also uh, uh, tell them what you are doing and how it could benefit their company. So in your professional field, for instance, you are, uh, uh, maybe you do, maybe you are, you are a consultant, you are a researcher, and you do a lot of research on, on topical issues, and you have approached an organization, a research a think tank to sponsor you, or, and you want to let them know that one, you'll be able to support their research work and all that. So it's about knowing the organization and knowing how you package yourself to be relevant to the organization. And you can help the organization in so, 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 so many ways. Some can do it by marketing. When, so when I approach a telco, you can tell the telco, okay, so I'm a brand ambassador. So I'm able to av uh, avail myself as a brand ambassador. If, if you are into advertising. So there are a lot of ways you can tell the organization that, hey, look, when you sponsor me, this is how you're going to benefit from me and always ask for referral. So when you approach a sponsorship, a potential sponsor, ask the organization if you know of any organization who will be interested in, in, in sponsoring me. And you, because of networks, interestingly, you may realize that it's, it's, it's possible that an organization will tell you, oh, wow, Contact social organizations, contact organizations A, B, C. They may be interested in sponsoring you. So this is one of the things that when you have the opportunity to, to book an appointment with your potential sponsor, let them know that they should give you referrals. And that also uh, widens your scope of fundraising. At the end of the meeting, make an innovative request. So don't just be has, uh, uh, interested or hasty in putting up the request, but your request should be very uh, appetizing and 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 an interesting innovative way of requesting for sponsorship all right so i want to talk about the last uh, okay other sponsorship so how do you approach uh, potential sponsor? reach out to many organizations you know uh, uh, there is no harm in saying no to you so if you have an opportunity to approach 20 organizations please do if 19 organizations say no, and you have one saying yes, that's good for you. But if you decide to not to approach many organizations, your risk, your, your probability of reaching out to sponsors is, is limited. So reach out to many organizations as possible. Schedule an appointment, like I've talked about. At the end of the appointment, make a request and look out for names of those you want to see during your appointment. So for, for instance, if, if you are going to an organization and you are targeting to speak to, or you are targeting some particular personality, make sure that, or try in your request, your, your, your booking to see if you can have a sex to that person or meet to, with that person. And that's also very important uh, point that you need to take note. Thank you.
Um, so that is, I think this is all uh, you would need to know. What are some of the benefits to your sponsors that I've mentioned? You can use their logos on your paraphernalia during the event. So once you have been able to secure a, a sponsorship, you have to let them know so that we we'll add them to our list of sponsors as organizers of the iBoot Camp. It is very, very, very important. Then speak about the organization and the support that you have received with any opportunity that you have. So some of us on social media, we have lots of followers. Some of us do a lot of things. We can use this, our platforms to, I mean, promote our sponsors and tell the sponsor that these are the networks I have. These are the spaces I have. These are the links I have. Once you sponsor me, I'm going to use all those my links to advertise your company. Aside the advertisement that we are going to do at the bootcamp when you submit this sponsors to us. Then post live speeches while we are at the event. So for them to know that, oh, wow, you are at the event, you need to be keeping them updated with live events, live pictures, videos, and all that. And if you can write articles, if you can write in the papers, if you can write in the newsletters uh, about this particular sponsorship, let them know and do so that it creates also chance for you for future sponsorships. So that is all you need to know, like the few things we want to share with you whilst you preparing your sponsorship packages. Then potential sponsors, you may want to consider banks, telcos, transport organizations, and pharmaceuticals. These are just a list, but there are more and more you can explore. Now there are a lot of foundations that are interested in promoting courses like this. So you need to find out some of these foundations. So on my head up for my colleagues in Ghana, we have the Kufo Foundation, we have the PK Amwabin Foundation, which has just, uh, we all know of PK Amwabin, that is just for, um, um, uh, for the sake of those in Ghana. For other countries, you may want to sit and then map out some of these organizations and see how they can be of benefit to you and reach out to them. Thank you. So the last point we want to share with you on the sponsor uh, fundraising uh, technique. Next slide, please. As organizing fundraising events. So organizing events. So uh, a, a, a quick recap. We talked about uh, crowd, crowdfunding. We just spoke about sponsorship funding. Now we'll talk about organizing fundraising events. So these are events that you organize with a motive of raising funds. But there are other secondary motives. So an event, for instance, to give skills to people, to train people, but at the same time, you want the people to pay before they attend the event. So you get money whilst you give out skill to the people. So there are two windows. One, as an event that people pay before they attend. Like I just mentioned, a training program. So the registration fee is $20. You pay, you come, and you go home with, I mean, skills. Another window is an event people come and come and donate to you. So this, you need to look at these two windows and see which is more promising for the kind of event we want to organize. And, and, and it's likely to give us a lot of returns in terms of money, cash. So these are the options you need to do. You need to do, you can do seminars for people. And before you do this event, you must identify a need. And the need as the basis for the event, because the event must really make an impact into people's life. It can be an entertainment, or it can be a skill acquisition event, or it can be any other event maybe an event to network or something, you get it. But the motive is to raise funds. So you, you have to know whether it is how much people are going to pay. Sometimes you don't even charge more because it, it's going to deter people. So, but you, you look at maybe organizing, paying people paying small, small, small money. And once you are able to move, uh, put these funds together, can take care of something. You can come in a form of a group to organize this event. So for instance, a, a, a yard, for instance, Yalda uh, Uganda branch. 
you are you, you want to you you have 10 candidates coming to the event so you are organizing a fundraising event on a particular activity uh, interest area or need and the purpose is to raise funds so you need to do some budgeting and know that okay so we have 10 people so if we say we are targeting 100 participants for this event and they pay one dollar one dollar one dollar we'll be able to take care of our registration cost for able to come and all that and so these are some of the events that you can look at and organize i know people have innovative events because a lot of branches have been organizing creative events during the COVID time we 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 we, we, we followed and we, we we took inventory of branches and their innovative activities so these are some creative activities you can decide to organize and then uh you'll be able to raise some funds to support your participation in the I, I boot camp. You know, sometimes when you organize this event, you need, because the motive, the primary motive is fundraising, you will need to target people, specific people, and invite them to the event. You don't just open it up for anybody at all to attend. So at the end of the day, if people who cannot give out money, who cannot pay, come to the event, you run at a loss. So that is one point you should note while doing this. Thank you. Next slide. Um, all, right, all right. So we are lastly going to talk about how do you receive funds? Issues of accountability and trust. So one, there are two approaches. And we know that most of the other branches are now more organized. Even we have more of country branches. So as a branch, and this may be my advice to the country leaders, as a branch, you will need to coordinate the whole fundraising process. Now, if an individual delegate want to attend the Abu in South Africa and approach an organization for sponsorship, and then the branch itself, it's also approaching the same organization for sponsorship. I think that, that particular sponsor may want to sponsor the brand instead of the individual. So aside individual networks that we can use to raise funds, the branches should also come together and put up this fundraising applications. But you must make it clear that this number of delegates are attending and that's why we, are need, we need the support. Now, how do people send money? So you can, if the branch is not registered, you can approach a developmental oriented organization, a non-profit organization to receive the money for you. And then the payment processes, the accountability processes, they are adhered to. An MOU, a memorandum of understanding with the organization will suffice. And you should call for that because this also then gives credibility to your sponsor that once I send the money, and this, these are the terms of engagement between the sponsor and then the receiver of the funds. Who is going to do the payment on my behalf and then i'm going to get accountability for it so you should be able to approach organization if the branch is not registered the branch doesn't have a bank account you should be able to approach a sponsor a credible institution a credible institution of course to receive the funds for you now if you're an individual and you're receiving money through uh, other means then you may also want as an individual to approach a corporate organization because that is strategic so that the funds are channeled through that and you outline the account, the, the, uh, the spending and accountability processes for your sponsor. So this creates kind of uh, credibility for, 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 for you. But then I will encourage that if the branch just if, if a branch has a bank account, you should use the branch to do the, the, the fundraising. That does not limit that individuals within the branches can also reach out to their, fam uh, their families and networks. So in conclusion, I would want to re-emphasize that you will first because there is a cost of fundraising fundraising costs so you will need to plan the fundraising and planning the fundraising means that you will need to one do a budget of your participation in the i boot camp two you will need to do a budget of your fundraising activity because a fundraising activity is an activity that you need to implement and it also involves resources. So the cost of your fundraising plus 
the cost of you participating in the I boot camp becomes your total cost that you should <laughs> be focusing on. Now, as a person, as a delegate, once you have finished your budget for participating in the boot camp, you can also explore family and friends to support you. So if, if for instance, you explore the family and friends uh, uh, approach and you have been able to identify 20 uh, family members that can support you. And each of these 20 family members gives you uh, uh, $50. $50 times 20, $50 times 20 becomes um, $1,000. Is that it? Yes, $1,000. And that is huge. So you may want to focus on identifying alternatively. This is a non-traditional way of fundraising, but it's, 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 it really makes impact. You, you want to first identify these 20 people in my, my networks can be friends, can be families and others. And you say, okay, anybody should give me $10. That is all. And at the end of the day, you're able to get a, a, a $100. And you are, you are, you are uh, $200. Uh, uh, and, and you are good to go. So it is also an option that I would want candidates to explore as it's very promising and can help you raise. So the fundraising is in, in an innovation. And it's a skill, and it's something you need to plan. You, you don't just off head say, "Okay, I want to raise money." No, it's something you need to sit down, you need to budget, you need to draw an action plan, and you need to undertake the implementation of the fundraising, and you're going to make impact. So, ladies and gentlemen, these are a few tips that we want to share with you as we are planning to raise funds for our iBoot Camp for this year. And I wish you all the best, and I hope I will see you there. We are moving to the next presentation, which I will hand over to Pretty to take us through. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, John. Really enjoyed that um, presentation. All right, so I'm going to talk about the last um, item in this uh, fundraising ideas. So this idea, as I heard it, apparently it was an idea that came about due to uh, another Yaltian from Botswana who was also at the time raising funds to attend an iBoot camp. So at the time he had managed, he or she had managed to amass some funds through the other ideas that had been presented, but had still come up short. So the idea was, how about I request miles? Um, from people who frequently fly. So uh, most of you would know that people who uh, fly frequently, your business people, that sort of thing, your CEOs, um, they accumulate points with these different um, flight carriers, which are called miles, um, that allow them to end up flying cheaply or for no money at all. So basically, this very bright person had the idea to say, why don't I ask um, people in my network to actually donate their miles to me so that I can actually be able to travel. So that's how the idea came up. As you'll forgive me, like I said, I'm somewhere and it's extremely noisy. So basically, the miles for youth empowerment in Africa was born as um, an idea than person to say, how about um, Yalda then facilitate asking for miles from various sources, from places where we know we can get these miles, get them donated in to Yalda and use them to help people be able to fly. So basically what then that means is that you also have an opportunity, you know people in your community, you know, we've just spoken about the different organizations, how to approach them, how to ensure you get support, you know, thinking about who in my community will be likely to have this sort of thing available, who can I ask, who's likely to help me, how do I approach them such that my request is successful. So think about those people on an individual basis, um, contact them, 
via the suggestions that you have been given here today and ask them to donate miles for you. That will greatly cheapen your, your flights. Um, from my understanding is that you would end up for example, not paying anything for the flight, but end up having to pay just taxes, um, depending on how much the taxes are, but they would be highly subsidized because you, you would have the, 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 the cost of the flight would have been covered by the miles. And then if you had done the, all the other processes like your crowdfunding, like your seeking sponsorship, then you have the other money to cover things like taxes, flight taxes, all, all of that. So that's what the Miles for Youth Empowerment in Africa is. Um, please, will you go to the next slide, Hasiba? All right. And then this slide just talks about the prospective people that you can talk to within your community who might be able to sponsor the flights, not necessarily just in your community, but people that you may you know who will be able to help you, whether they're there with you in country or elsewhere, but that you know you can build those relationships with. For example, individuals, as I said, CEOs in 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 big um, um, companies in your community. You know, somebody MTN was mentioned earlier. Approaching MTN to say, look. I'm attending the iBoot camp. Please sponsor my miles, you know. National embassies and their employees, because they travel a lot. Parastatals and their employees. Multilateral organizations and their employees. Private companies and their employees. So there's lots of different people that you can um, find and ask them to assist you and lay out your case in such a way that they will be willing to actually help you. All right, so that is that on that. Cool, okay, so we have come to the end of our slides as it were, pertaining to the actual process of um, fundraising. So just a very quick recap, we spoke about a number of things today, or a number of ways in which you can uh, request sponsorship. We spoke about crowdfunding, we spoke about sponsorship fundraising, we spoke about um, organizing fundraising events, and we also spoke about um, requesting miles from people in your networks that would be able to help you with that via the Mouth for Youth Empowerment in Africa program, okay? So before I get to, in fact, I think let me, um, talk about, I don't know, should we, John, should we do questions and answers first before we talk about how to connect with the elder or should we finish that aspect and then go into Q and A after? All right, okay, cool. Um, let us go to the queue. Really, you want to... and... Sorry, John, you were saying? I said you may want to complete the announcement so that we can just take the queue in. All right, okay, so the important announcement that I have from my side, I'll give hand over to you if there's any, and to Lana if there's anything she'd like to talk about. But basically, as you can see there, it's gonna be important for us to, um, um, ensure that we, we we get our message out there. A lot is happening on our social media pages. So please ensure that you go into our Yalda pages on the various social media, like our posts, share our posts, tweet, comment, and follow on the various platforms. And then in terms of connecting with, yeah, all right, um, Budani, you've raised the hand. Hey, Budani, you want to say something? Okay, no problem. All right, and then ways to connect with Yalda. I, I said there's various social media platforms. 
that they are on the screen. Again, this slides, I believe, will be shared with you. The Yalda International Facebook page is there for you. Yalda Africa on Twitter is available for you. Yalda Jumela on Instagram. There's a WhatsApp and uh, Telegram group. There's a YouTube channel. We're also on LinkedIn. Um, we're saying, please help us keep our social media platforms alive by posting your comments, by liking, by sharing, by engaging with the various content that we produce. All right, thank you very much. Um, next slide. Yes, again, we have come to the end. We are now going to get into questions and answers. All right, so let me just go through the questions here. All right, so I see that the only question that came was from okay, Langi. I hope I'm saying your name right. Langi Obanda from Lusaka, Zambia. Um, Langi, please unmute. Introduce yourself, your name, and your country, and then read your question as you have uh, written it down in the chat. Thank you for this opportunity, Pretty. Thank you. My name's Langewe Banda from Lusaka, Zambia. And my, I don't know if I'm audible enough. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, yeah, my name's Langewe Banda from Lusaka, Zambia. And my question was on crowdfunding. I saw um, most of the sites that were posted, the most common one, GoFundMe. I think my previous experience with that site is that personally from Zambia, we are not really uh, listed among us the countries that are eligible to subscribe or to uh, list our updates on GoFundMe. So I don't know how IEDA can help us with that. Or maybe it was just my past experience because last year I was trying to check if Zambia is eligible to list anything on GoFundMe International. So, and that's the only one that I'm familiar with. So I don't know if we can, the organizers can shed more light on crowdfunding and any other sites that are really, um, that countries like Zambia can register with without actually using PayPal, sites like PayPal to receive funds. Yeah, thank you. All right, awesome. Um, Langu, thank you so much for that question. Um, I think it's a very pertinent question. So personally, I don't think I, I don't have an answer for you right now. The only thing I would say is maybe something for us to research in the background um, with your um, I don't know whether it's, it's just so children or there's somebody else, but it's something that we can we can um, research in the background, try and find out how best to help um, Yalda Zambia. I don't know if with John or Lana have anything they want to add with regards to that. Um, pretty. Oops. I would just say that people should, um, there are many websites there that we have put, but one of the things that we should um, uh, note is that crowdfunding platforms on the African continent are an issue. So if you see that and you've got innovators, let us create a crowdfunding platform that will be accepted by African governments. Let's go to our ministries of youth, the multilateral organizations and state that we're trying to do this, it is a problem. And in other parts of the world, people have access, they can do crowdfunding. We are suffering as young people here on the African continent. So as much as it is a challenge, it's an opportunity for us to have concrete things that we can show our so-called leaders and multilateral organizations and even you as entrepreneurs to say, let's innovate around this and find something that can work for across Africa 
as young people and we bring it to the I boot camp to get financing. Thank you. Okay, thank awesome. you. So to add, also pretty, okay. Uh, to add to what Bukamu just said, yeah, it's, it's true. So uh, I want to speak about uh, a crowdfunding platform that is being developed here in Ghana here. So colleagues in Ghana can take advantage of that. It's called Yes Sumbi. It's, 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 it's for non-profit um, um, uh, courses. Uh, and so if you are here, you can get in touch with me. It's also a platform. It's a locally made platform. It's used to raise funds locally, supporting people are using it around the space of non-profit events and, uh, and, and missions. Uh, so that, that's in line with what Bukamu just said. Thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you so much uh, to the both of you for that. Um, I, I, I really love this mindset of, you know, if the, the existing solutions are not suitable for us, as Africans, let's create our own solutions. I really love this mindset. I think that's one of the reasons why ALDA exists for us to actually be the people who um, develop solutions for fellow Africans. So Langiwe, please check out all the other different sites that were listed on that um, and see if they would be suitable for Zambia. But again, there's another opportunity for you potentially as well to assist the youth and the people of Zambia to create a platform that actually will be able to assist Zambians um, and potentially Africans in crowdfunding. All right, great. Um, the next question here, John, how much is it to attend the iBoot camp? <laughs> So we are still in the process of uh, coming out with the with the course lines, looking at issues of uh, registration, issues of um, flight, and and all that. So we will we'll announce some of the rates as and when we see them. But individually, we can start our own investigation or research to find out what it would take for a person to travel to South Africa, and then issues of transport and registration of that. So we'll be updating with that information. All right, great. Thank you very much, John. I trust that once the information is fully available to everyone, when you have the, the, the full cost breakdowns, you will be in a position to share that with um, everybody. Um, but again, the, the simpler things. If I can things, just jump in okay. and say, it should not be more than $1,500, right? And that includes plane tickets and registration fees and everything that uh, John has talked about. And so you're looking at, and, and this is estimating given flights from different parts of Africa, because we, we know a little bit about how much they cost and we're trying to find sponsors, obviously. Um, but it's not Morocco where Royal Air Morocco gave us 50%, 70% flight discount. So as you all know, South African Airways went defunct during COVID-19 and it has not come back to its um, uh, former glory. So South African Airways is not an institution or a company we can ask for sponsorship. We are trying to look at other avenues, but given that, I would say to people, for example, if you are coming by bus from Botswana, you're looking at maybe $20, maybe uh, $50. The bus ticket to Pretoria and back is $50, plus the registration fee, which should not be more than $250. So you're looking at $300, right, with the bus. So we're looking at people who are coming by bus um, and then people who are coming by flight. So the range, I would say $500 to $1,500. And this also includes some of you who would need visas. That's very, very important because I think, John, you should give your experience of getting visas for Morocco. South African visas can take four weeks. We want to make sure you've got at least six to apply for the visas because that's a very serious one. And hopefully, um, uh, we will get uh, expedited visas, but you want six weeks that you apply 
six weeks before, two months, three months before. So I would hand over to John just to explain visa importance and thinking of that because a lot of African countries need visas for South Africa. <laughs> yeah, Bukamu. So first of all, you need to find out whether your country need a visa to go to South Africa or not. That's the starting point. And if you need a visa, what is the duration for the visa to for you to get a visa? Now you would need a visa letter and then a confirmation of participation letter. So you would need to register in time as early as possible so that we are able to give you this letters. We took to the embassy. Now you should also prepare to pay. Some embassies you have to pay for the visa. Now we we the experience from 2018 was that we were liaising with the Moroccan embassies in various countries. And in fact, there were delays. Some people would do, some people were not expect, uh, were expecting their visas, they couldn't get their visas and we're not getting response and all the, so it's, it's a back and forth thing. So the advice is that the experience, the learning that is that we want to handle visa issues as much as early as possible so that we are not uh, uh, confronted with some of these challenges we experienced in the past. So it's really one of the biggest challenges that, or biggest tax that you need to address whilst we are, um, planning your, your attendance to this hybrid camp. So please don't forget about the visa issues. Register in time, we'll give you the letters in time and you put in your application in time so that you get your visa to travel. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. And I would actually say, no matter what, even if you're still doing your fundraising process, the one thing you should do is at least get your visa. Because once you have your visa, who knows what can happen? Because last minute you can get a sponsor to take you there to South Africa. But visas is the most important thing. So whatever you do, make sure you have the funding in your country for visas. And it's very complicated with South Africa as well because unlike any other African country I know, um, the South African visa process is very complicated. And they can even ask you to put in money aside for a return ticket. So it might even end up doubling your cost that I talked about. Let's say maybe a ticket to South Africa is $1,000 that they might ask you to put in another thousand just in case they need to deport you. I mean, it's the most industrialized country in Africa. So of course, a lot of people are trying to get there. I don't think that they're doing too well lately because they don't have power but that's an, uh, uh, my um, comments for another day. I hope there are no South Africans on to hear this, but I guess they don't need to be on because they're not, <laughs> they are local delegates. So, um, but visas, 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 very, very important. You need to get that information. South African embassies are in almost every single African country, if not every single African country. So go to your South African embassy and get that information today or on Tuesday, because everybody I think has the long holiday on May 1st, because it's Labor Day, International Labor Day. So on the second, go to that embassy and get your information. Thank you. Thank you, Priti. Thank you, John. All right, awesome. Um, thank you so much. I trust that you, um, that was clear and that you understood that. Um, Masiba has put a very important website there on the chat, which helps you to check whether you need um, a visa for traveling um, anywhere in the world. So please uh, check that out. I uh, have a question. Does anybody here in, the, in this call have experience with crowdfunding? If you have experience with crowdfunding, please uh, let us know there in the chat and then we'll allow you to just maybe um, tell us a little bit more about your experience trying to crowdfund in Africa. Um, Ms. Ani, I had previously asked you to write your question in the chat, but I see you haven't. I'm just gonna allow you to unmute and speak. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, my question is, first of all, 
how many people do you want for for the boot camp in Pretoria? And also, I want to find out the, the, the countries which are allowed to travel to South Africa to attain the, the IP camp. All right, uh, thank you for those questions. So this, the second question was how many, which countries are allowed to attend the IBU camp? Hi, Dimson, can you clarify your second question there for us? Masra understood it. Yeah, because there was a certain question Sorry, from, I think a certain lady from Zambia said the other countries are failing to access, I don't know what they're trying to take, so I want to find out the list of countries which are failing to access the, I don't know, it's the loan, I don't, so I don't, I want to find out the, how many, how many countries make you have the list of those that are failing. In to terms of visas? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so on that one, you, I, I, I'm not sure that there's any country that is banned from being able to visit South Africa. And the, what you need to do is confirm whether you need a visa to actually go to South Africa. For example, me in Botswana, I won't need um, a, a visa. Um, I've got, you know, 90 days that they give you to enter the country and go back. So I won't need to apply. But potentially, if you're in Morocco, or somewhere else, you might need a visa. So it's upon you to find out, go on to that website that was shared by Hasiba, find out whether you need a visa to uh, be able to enter South Africa, find out what the requirements are and plan for that in advance so that you're actually able to enter come 27 September or whenever it is you be traveling. And then the first question was, remind me again, how many people are, are we expecting? Yeah, yeah, because there's a, I hope we have, we have got some preparation. So they, I think they have, they have a target. Maybe you want a certain amount of number according to your budget and the space. So I'm asking how many, um, how many, yeah, how many people for the, for the, for the camp? Okay, so maybe you're speaking to issues of capacity. How many people, in terms of capacity, how many people can yeah, the IB yeah. can post potentially? Yeah, so John, I don't yeah. know whether you have anything you want to add to that. In the meantime, I suppose, do you mind sharing the link again in the chat for those who might have missed it? But if you scroll up, you'll be able to see it. And, uh, and I hope we, in the coming, uh, and I hope in the coming days we're able to share the, the, the details maybe about the cost i think you shared maybe in an email maybe in a video so you can create a study there. i hope so maybe. yes information on cost will be shared um john yes so we'll be launching the application so they should just follow us on our uh, media pages and all that we'll be sharing the details once we launch the um, the application everything will be in there Right, awesome. I trust that you have had that. So as you can see, we are still in the planning stages of the boot camp. Um, we've got a date already that has been set, but now we're looking at doing all the background work. So every single thing that you need to know will be availed to you as soon as it is available. That is why it's important that you connect with um, Yalda on the various social media pages as mentioned. All right. Um, you also have the other email that you can also email if you have any additional questions, you know, stuff like that. So there will be information that will be shared as and when it, it is available for you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, there's no other questions that are written in the chat. I don't see anybody else with that hand raised. Um, I'm not sure whether there's anything else you want to add. Um, Kuma, thank you so much for that. The other email is there on the chat for you as well. Anything to add? Any last words? John? Oh, my last word is just connect with us on our pages for more updates. Follow. 
All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, everybody who joined today. Um, will we get a letter of invitation or sponsorship letter to raise funds? John, can you speak to that? Yes. Yeah, so we'll be sharing templates. We'll be sharing templates that can serve as a guide to uh, prospective fundraisers. So we'll be sharing some templates as a guide. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any other questions? We are literally about to close the meeting. If you have any question that you want that you, a burning question that you want to ask before we close the meeting, please. This is your chance. Ten seconds before we have to close the meeting. All right. So there are no questions. Um. Thank you so much again to everybody who joined today. I trust that this was a very uh, fruitful and informative session for you. Um, we are super duper excited for the iBoot camp. We look forward to seeing you there. Uh, please do start your sponsor, um, your fundraising efforts ASAP uh, or start thinking about doing the planning and all of that so that by the time September comes around, you are in a good uh, shape and form to send um, enough people. All right, so yes, um, there's a question there about uh, speaking opportunities. Um, what I will ask you to do there is please email yaldaafrica at gmail.com with that question and your what you were thinking you know, your proposal in terms of that, and then you, you, you will get a response. If you have any other questions that haven't been addressed today, um, we ran out of time, uh, but please do email yaldaafrica at gmail.com. Your question will be answered. Follow us on the various social media platforms. We will we'll be talking about the iBook camp in detail on those platforms. All right. Thank you guys very much. Bye. All right. Thank you, pretty. Bye. Bye. Hasiba.